Welcome! This is another video in my NIV Bible reading series. In this video, I will be reading through Matthew 13. Um, it's going to talk about some parables. The parable of the sower. Uh, parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The parable of the net. Um, I'm going to talk about a prophet. A parable of the mustard seed, parable of weeds. So there's going to be many, many parables packed into one in this. Uh, and uh, let me see. I might do 14, 15, 16, and 17. together okay anyway ah oh, it's raining outside i hope i hope that it won't mess up the audio but anyway we're on 13 okay uh niv stands for new international version just letting you in case you didn't know uh, let's just get into it matthew 13 uh, the parable of the sower. That day, that same day, Jesus went out to the out of the house of. Uh, let me start that over. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him, and that, that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, "A farmer went out to sow the sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, the seed some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up." Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they, because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and, a came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You say so that prophecy says, you know, a scripture quote. You, which is, I, I love that. Uh, you, I love. I'm loving all these Isaiah scripture quotes. Uh, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. That's good. Isaiah 6, 9 through 10. And uh, it says in parentheses, C. Septuagint. I think that Septuagint is one of the original... Uh, one of the transcripts or something like that. Um, I haven't looked into. You know, what, let me look that up real quick. Uh, what is the Septuagint exactly? I know. I, I just know it's like one of the translations that is used to, uh, or one of the scripts. Scripture. Septuagint. What's the the Septuagint, oh, it's the Greek Old Testament, or the translation of the 70, often abbreviated as LXX. The Torah, the, the, Torah, the Nevin, the Nevi'im, the Ketuvim. Yeah, okay, so the, the Septuagint is the earliest extent greek the earliest extent greek translation of the old testament from the original hebrew okay so you have the original hebrew 
And then the Septuagint is the translation of that into the Greek. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, let's see. But blessed are your ah. Uh, oh, wait, uh, and then that was yeah, that was uh, Isaiah six nine ten. Okay. And but bless, but blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you. Many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and that once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the, the, and the deceitfulness of, the well, of, of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. You know, I, I know this must be speaking to somebody. I I, I know I I feel like I'm spoken to in this. You know, I feel I feel I feel a pang of guilt somewhere. Uh, cursing it because of the word, they fo quickly fall away. Okay, life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making soil, oh, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred sixty or thirty times. What was sown? And I was going to talk about the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom, of uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed, seed and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the, when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and, came to him and said, Sir, don't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked, asked him, did you, want to, did you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the, gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And now it's gonna, that's some good stuff. You know, do, God, I have to tell you, I have to ask you, do you, are you, do you want to be the chaff that's going to be burned? Or do you want to be the, the, the wheat? You know what I'm saying? We, we must ask, we must ask ourselves and constantly remind ourselves every day. You got the wheat and the chaff. Which one are you? Which one do you, which one do we want to be? Which one do you watching this want to be the wheat or the chaff? And I pray to God every day. That that he that he that he makes me the that 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 he makes me the the wheat the, the wheat you know what I'm saying so to, to be the wheat you know what I'm saying you know and, and a lot and you know you know that is that is a good question can the wheat turn into the chaff can the wheat or can the wheat seem like the chaff I mean can the wheat seem can the, can the chaff seem like the wheat for a time but then be discovered as the, but then turn into the chaff get be given weight turned into the chaff I don't know I don't know meaning like you fall away from you fall away from that. You know what I mean. F fall away from 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 following Jesus. That's a good question, and a, a very uh, a debate topic among Christianity. Can you give us is, is sa one saved always saved? Um, that'd be nice. I I hope that's the case. I like I'd like to think that, but I just can't. I can't um. At th at this point, I I I just can't confirm that. Um, because there there are good arguments for both sides, I think. But um, where was I at? Okay, and then there's the par the parable of the mustard seed and the yeast. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds. Yet, it, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is, is like yeast that a man took and mixed into about sixty pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. 
And then Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. Uh, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. And that's Psalm 78, 2. See, I, I need, see, you know, these parables, I mean, these, these connections to Psalms, oh man. You know, I, I need to read Psalms, man. I need to read Psalms. I haven't read Psalms yet. I need to get there. Huh. Yeah, what, what's up? I'm, I'm doing my video. But anyway, yeah, that was that was Psalm seventy-eight two. Uh, okay, now the, we're on the parable of the weeds. He's gonna explain the parable of the weeds to his disciples, to the to the disciples. Uh, then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, "Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field." He answered, "The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom." The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvest harvesters are angels. Oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, I think that's talking about in Revelation. I think that's what they're talking about. How in Revelation, how it's talking about the, the goats will be separated from the sheep, and uh, with and the goats would be the chaff, and then. Uh, the or the goats or it would be the equivalent of the chaff, and then the sheep would be the wheat. So like those that survive the tribulation, the seven year tribulation or something like that, uh, are going are uh, are going to be, are, they're going to be people are going to be separated into from the from the from the wheats and the chaff uh, from wheat and the chaff, and stuff like that, you know, and or the, or the goats and the sheep or whatever, you know what I'm saying? That, that that's that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, I, if I'm wrong on that, then you know, yeah, yeah, please please let me know. Uh, if that's not what they're actually talking about. Uh, the harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Yeah, see, oh, the end of the age? Uh, what, what, is this? What, what does Revelation talk about? The end of the age. End of the age. Um, and stuff like that. John himself. John, you know, not John the Baptist, but John the disciple. John, John who, the book, say the John from the book of, that made the book of John. Um, and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, as the weeds are are pulled up and burned in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Oh, oh, oh I'm trying to hear. I'm trying to hear. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, uh, the parables now it's going to talk about the parable of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The parables, uh, the, the the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the in a field. When a man found it, it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. That makes sense. Uh, that makes sense because um that does kind of connect. I think I feel like that kind of connects back to when Jesus said, you know, to the rich man, he was like, "Sell all your stuff and follow me," and he didn't because he he just walked away. He just walked away, you know, sad or whatever, because he was unwilling to part with his with 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 earthly treasures that will only return to the dust. They they collect dust and they will they will return to the dust. Our flesh will return to the dust. You know we must we we must put our treasures in heaven and and not um, focus on material things because those materials do not last. And that's just that's just facts. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that has let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up pulled it up on the shore. Then they sat down. And collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous, and throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? Jesus asked. Yes, they replied. He said to them, 
Therefore, every teacher of the law who has become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. I see, I see, because 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 the old covenant, as far as I know, in, in this time, like that they're taught writing about when Jesus is talking, the old covenant is still in effect. The old, co the new covenant, as far as I know, didn't go into effect until Jesus is dying on the cross, and his raising and and his his death and resurrection, you know, and stuff like that. As far as I know, um, I may be wrong. If I'm wrong on that, let me know. Uh, and uh, yeah. So, that, so the, the people that the like say the Pharisees and the people of the old or the old covenant during this time, they they, they followed the old covenant, you know, and stuff like that, or at least to their, at least to their best ability, um, and then and then they willingly ex they accepted Jesus, you know, when he, when hearing about him and stuff like that, you know, then you know, and stuff like that. That'd be that'd be part of the you were they had the old treasures, and then they had the new, you know, you followed the old covenant while it was in effect observe the old covenant and then the new covenant and with, that, that comes with jesus christ you know they're gonna they're gonna accept they accept jesus christ and they become part of the saved in the new covenant they, they get the salvation in the new covenant so that, that, that'd be that's fresh that's fresh that's facts all uh, right and then prophet without uh, honor when jesus had fin prophet without honor when jesus had finished these parables he moved on from there Coming to his coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue, and they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? They asked. The, isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them. A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his and in his own home. He and he did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. And then yeah, that, that's it. That's for thirteen. That was quite a long chapter, but so many so many good parables in there. That was that was nice. That was fresh. And then that is fresh. You know what I'm saying? And then uh, there, there's a um an insight here. Uh, for 1357, and they took offense, and they took offense at him, and stuff like that. You know, he went to his hometown, and they were, and they were like, and they didn't accept, and they took offense at him. And said so Jesus had opened his his points out. You know, the people who did the notes for this study Bible point out Jesus had opened his hometown ministry in a synagogue on a an occasion marked by a near riot, and it says, see Luke 4:16 to 31. When he returned, he aroused great curiosity, but little belief. The townsfolk couldn't fathom how one who'd been raised in their midst by a carpenter was now teaching like a rabbi and performing miracles. Because of their lack of faith, Jesus was reluctant to display his supernatural power for them and quietly withdrew. Makes sense. Um, anyway, yeah, that's chapter 13. Um, Reminder to to feed to feed yourself to 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 feed yourself not just physically but feed yourself spiritually. And how do you do that? Prayer, and reading out reading and medit and like just meditating on the word. Read the word with understanding. And uh, you know if you wanted if and then you know fasting is another thing as well. You know fasting for spiritual reasons. Um, if you if you are medically able, I I definitely do suggest doing that um and if you are interested in, in fasting because jesus doesn't say if you fast jesus says when you fast and uh, uh not, not that i think I don't, I don't think that you're going to hell if you don't fast but um i definitely think there are spiritual benefits to fasting uh for example oh uh, i don't know i don't want to want to you know, I'm just gonna just gonna end that there. I don't want to give an example because there's, there's like a whole thing that I'm. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna leave it there. Um, uh, if you're interested in fasting and and learning about fasting, uh, check out Vlad Sav Savchuk. Yeah, uh, just look at look up uh, look him up on uh, on YouTube. Um, he has tons of videos. He has a, he has a free book about fasting, and you can you can get you can learn much more from him than me. 
Um, yeah, like this man's this man's wild, Vlad Savage. Like he he did a forty day fast. I right? uh, if if you want to learn about fasting, go you know, see see his videos. He has tons of videos. Um, he recently did a twenty one day fast challenge, um, a community challenge that he he participated in. And uh, he had, there's twenty there's twenty one days worth of videos talking about that. Many more videos, including that he has a free book on fast called Fast Forward. You can go get that if you want. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it there. And uh, yeah.